What's going on guys? So it's been a while since I gave you an update on the studio. I know it's uh, it's been crazy lately with all the Ampere RTX 3000 series coverage. It's really kind of uh, taken over my life for the last few weeks and prevented me from really kind of creating much content outside of that. But there's just this little period now that the RTX 3080 and 3090 have launched, I kind of have this, this kind of a uh, this, this nice quiet time until the RTX 3070 launches and then it's gonna ramp up again. So I, I'm taking this opportunity to give you guys another update on the place because uh, I, I don't wanna say a lot has happened since then when it comes to the new office, but there's been two major changes that you guys don't really know about. Maybe if you follow me on social media and other places I've posted about it. But anyway, there's been two major changes to the place since the last time I really vlogged about it, that have opened up the doors to uh, a, a lot of different projects that we can now tackle. So it's pretty exciting. I'm gonna go over everything today. I think it's an important update to make because once I start doing things you're, and start posting more about uh, upgrades and various things like that, you're gonna wonder how the hell I, I got to these decisions um, without hearing everything I have to say in this video first. So the first major change that we've done to the place is I bought a wall. I didn't go to a store and was like, hey, where's your walls? What aisle are your walls in? I didn't, go to, I didn't go to Walgreens, terrible joke. Um, no, I, I hired people to build a wall for me. I guess I could have done it myself, but time, time is the biggest thing. Uh, but this is like, this is a big boy wall. This isn't a set wall. It's not a temporary wall. This is a full blown permanent partition wall with wood studs going all the way across. And if you take a look, there are a couple ways we could have done this. At first I was like, well, should we build it all the way to the ceiling? And then I was like, that, that was an immediate kind of uh, no, because it's kind of unnecessary. As a film set, I don't really need it to go to the top. We don't need like sound isolation between these two parts of the building. So that just seemed unnecessary. Plus you've got all these pipes in the way. So instead we did a partition wall that doesn't go all the way here and it doesn't go all the way to the ceiling, but we did put a beam. We had this nice big wooden beam that goes all the way from the top to the bottom. And we actually had uh, the guys drill into the, the concrete to stabilize it, just to make it really nice and secure. You can kind of see the bolts up there. This thing ain't going nowhere. The reason why the beam's important is because without it, this part of the wall, this corner of the wall could potentially flex if we put too much weight on the wall or on this tabletop. And I am planning to put more stuff here, obviously, because there's really nothing on it right now, except beautiful Prometheus there. So yeah, now it's all nice and secure. No, no, no issues there. In fact, this tabletop is now the strongest one out of the whole assembly. And by the way, I think this is the first time in a video where I've shown the full completed floating desk assembly. The C is complete. Oh! beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. But yeah, this thing is uh, is not going anywhere because it's going straight into wood, wood studs. Whereas these floating desks, if you guys remember, are going into the drywall directly, even though I'm using heavy duty toggle bolts. I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. I'm not planning to put a heavy load on, on these desks. Just to recap, this is like the, the workshop benchmarking area where I'm not going to be putting much more on these tabletops than what you see here. A monitor with some peripherals, maybe a test bed or two, and th th that like hardly weighs anything. This is actually going to be a lighter load. This, this tabletop's going to have a lighter load than any of them because this is the gaming center. Gaming center, that sounds stupid. The gaming table where I'm gonna have three monitors that are floating. They're gonna be on the wall, so that's not even gonna be load bearing. And then there's gonna be another display, a 48CX from LG, the same one that I put in the bathroom recently. That's gonna go above it. So that's all gonna be off the table. The only thing that'll be on this tabletop, keyboard, mouse, mouse pad, I don't know, maybe some, you know, a lamp, I don't know, some decor crap that doesn't really weigh anything. So I'm not worried about that at all either. This is completely sturdy, don't have to worry about that. This is the tabletop I'm worried most about because this is the one that I know for sure I'm gonna put a PC on. Actually, you know what? I just thought this needs a PC too. Th or this this setup, obviously. Okay, so this is what I'm this is what I'm thinking. I'm gonna have a PC here and a PC here. They're both gonna be on this tabletop, and I'm gonna and I have legs. I got metal legs, guys. Metal legs that are gonna go under here, one right here, and then one over there. I know it's not gonna look super clean, it's gonna kinda throw off the floating look, but I don't care. You know, functionality is key here, and I wanna protect these babies at all costs. Prometheus isn't going on here. Prometheus is gonna go probably in the editing bay, because it's a workstation system, but this is gonna be the gaming PC for this monitor setup, and then the other system is gonna be for streaming, because once COVID ends, assuming that COVID is going to end at some point during our existence, Paul will be able to come over again for awesome hardware when we do our live streams, and that means we're gonna need a a streaming system, which is why streaming PC. Monitors, so I'm gonna have a nice little setup here as well. And uh, because of that, I really need this tabletop to, to step up its game. With these metal legs, which are extremely sturdy, I can't even remember where I got them, but they're, they're very solid, fully metal and adjustable. With those legs under here, I don't really have any concerns um, because uh, all the load or a big chunk of the load is now gonna be transferred to those legs and it should be fine. That's kind of what's going on here. I have no idea what to put here yet. I've got some ideas, obviously the monitors, that's kind of self-explanatory, but as far as this corner of, of the set, you guys let me know, I need some ideas. 
I need all the help I can get. There's just a million different things I could do with it and I'm not sure. One thing I know for sure though, it's gonna be a lot cleaner in its design language. It's gonna be a lot cleaner and simpler, more minimal than this. There, there's a small handful of you that I've seen in the comments, you know, in recent videos since we started shooting here saying that this is just too busy for a background, which I completely understand your point of view. And, and I actually kind of agree. You know, it is, it is kind of cluttered when you look at it. But the reason for that is because this is the only part of the set really that's supposed to be highly functional. This is more of a workshop area, building area, modding, whatever, than it is a film set. This isn't the primary area where I'm gonna be shooting videos from. Everything is cluttered and on the wall because I need it to be quick and easy to access. But once I build this up, this is where I'm gonna be shooting most of the time. So you don't have to worry too much about that for those of you who, uh, who just hate this new set, this part of the set, um, that's gonna be more of a working area. The other idea I had with this space was to put a floating grid for lighting, like a lighting grid that goes up here above the entire set. Because right now I've got these C stands, which are great. You know, they work well, they're really sturdy, but they take up a lot of floor space. They're heavy, they're bulky, kind of sucks moving them around. I'll probably still have a couple of these floating around, to be honest. I don't think the grid's gonna go all the way to that wall, for sure it's not. So I'm still gonna have these, but at least these C stands will be out of the way. And any lighting that I need over here will be off the ground. That way I don't trip on them. I don't have to step around them. Don't have to move them. It'll just be a lot more streamlined and make for a more efficient workflow. Of course, that's not something that I absolutely need to do right now. It's not a pressing issue, but it is something that I definitely want to tackle in the future. The other thing that makes a really good case for that idea of having all these lights up here is that when the awesome contractor who did that partition wall came over, he looked at my panel and he noticed that I've got, got a lot of options here. None of these are taken. Only, only like the top, the top few, maybe the top uh, eight or nine or so are taken. I can wire this up. I can totally wire this up and have dedicated lines going to the lights up here. I'm not an electrical expert uh, with that sort of thing, but I'm sure I could figure it out or you know maybe hire someone to help me out. Uh, but yeah, that's that's definitely going to give me a lot of uh, flexibility with how I outfit uh, the lighting assembly up there. So I'm pretty excited. Again, not coming anytime soon, but it is kind of nice to know that uh, it's on the to-do list. The other thing worth noting about this space is that the audio is pretty terrible. The echo is atrocious because this wall in particular is so bare and flat. Once this is all decked out, once I have this all decorated and stuff, there's gonna be a lot of objects, you know, there's gonna be texture and stuff that's gonna help break up the sound so it doesn't reflect as much, but this is basically a bounce board for noise, which is why the audio in the last few videos or in our recent videos, over since moving in here has been so awful. So I really appreciate you guys sticking with me and being patient. I know it doesn't sound great. It, it kills me every time I, I listen back to our own videos lately, but I did just purchase eight acoustic panels. They're two by four, so they're fairly large. I know they get bigger than that, of course, but they're definitely bigger than these little one by one squares that I used to have in the uh, the bedroom studio at home. I was thinking about reusing these, but they're so, they're so janky. You know, they're cheap. That's the one thing that they have going for them. They're really cheap, but you kind of get what you pay for. They're a pain to stick onto any surface, even with like the command strips and you know cardboard DIY thing that I did. By the time we moved out of that bedroom studio, I think maybe a third of these had fallen off the wall just naturally. And I know there's probably other ways to uh, to fix them more securely, but I just, I'm kind of sick of them. I don't want to deal with them. Plus the ones that I bought are not only bigger, but they're thicker as well. They're four inches thick as opposed to being like, what, one, one and a half inches thick on that. So I think they're going to perform a lot better. I'm going to have eight of them going across the entire wall. So I think that uh, a two by four, I think, I think I calculated it briefly. It was six inches apart. I think each panel is going to be six inches apart. They're ivory, kind of like an off-white cream color. I think it'll look really nice and classy. Um, and I was wondering if I should now them up high or down low. Not down low, but more like eye level. I guess if it's eye level with me, that is still pretty low. But anyway, the reason why I would mount them a little bit lower is because my other thought was maybe putting some wall-mounted shelving all the way across. Very similar to the racks that I have up here above the pegboards. Getting more of these garage racks, putting them all the way across. You can never have too much storage. So that's an idea. Plus having more stuff up there will help, will further help break up the sound uh, and, uh, and reduce the echo. The only issue is that like the rest of this whole building, no wood stuff. Studs. They're all metal studs and they're very thin metal studs. And I know that there are uh, special um, screws that you can use to secure things to those studs. I think they're called self drilling screws. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, as you always do. But if I use those, then maybe what I can do is take some really long wooden planks going all the way across, drill those into the metal studs, and then take the garage racks 
and mount that to the wooden planks. I think that would be the best solution. I haven't fully convinced myself that that's what I'm gonna do yet, uh, or if I want shelving here, but I, I'm sort of leaning towards that right now. You guys let me know what you think, if you have any ideas there. So that's pretty much what's going on over here. Okay, pretty, pretty cool stuff. Oh yeah, the other thing is like, I have to like work out the networking situation. Right now it's just a modem up there. I haven't even added my own router. This is just the, I almost said the stock modem. This is the, the modem that uh, AT&T provided. It's been working fine. I have, uh, you know, gigabit fiber internet, so it's really awesome. Um, but uh, I, I wanna fix that up at some point, maybe put a ubiquity system in here, run some more lines to the rest of the place. I think that'd be pretty snazzy. But yeah, let's talk about this area. This is a whole other can of worms. This is the storage space, right? Where we've got a lot of products, uh, pretty much almost all our products besides cases. Right now, the storage racks look a little empty because uh, once the guys were building the wall, I had to move all these racks out of the way so it wouldn't interfere with them. So that's why a lot of a lot of products are in the kitchen right now. It's kind of a disaster in here. I mean, just, just look at this. I got GPUs for days, bruh. So many GPUs. It's like Jensen's kitchen. All right, so that's all. That's all eventually gonna come back out here. But now that we have the wall, I can actually start utilizing this space to its fullest potential. Because right now, it, it's okay. We've got these two by four shelves. We got two by four racks. There's four of them. One, two, three, four. And I like the fact that they're two feet wide because it allows me to put kind of double down on products. I can put products on both sides and that way I can access them from from two sides instead of you know if this was against the wall I would have like a I'd have a pile up problem I'd have to like dig to get to stuff in the back but when they're like this and they're free on both sides it makes it really nice and it's a good use of space however I've I've gone back to the drawing board and I've devised a new strategy for how I'm going to set this up so uh, imagine that this side is the, uh, the the wall which is exactly eight feet the uh, the partition wall the new wall is eight feet long so imagine that's on the right side and this is the setup that I'm thinking we're going to have racks going all along the wall. So now it's a, a C shape, just like the film set is actually. It's almost a carbon copy in that way, but just with product shelves. And then we're gonna have two more in the middle. These ones are gonna be the thickest. They're gonna have, uh, they're gonna be two feet wide by four feet long, just like the racks that are in there right now are. But everything else, all the other racks are only gonna be 18 inches wide or a foot and a half because there's no need to make them two feet. One, it's gonna make the aisles really narrow. You can see there's two aisles here. It would make them too narrow and also pile up problem. I don't need two feet for a rack that I'm only gonna be able to access from one side. So that's kind of how I figured that out. So I do think this layout is going to maximize the space really well, much more, much more so than what we have here. And uh, it's going to be the same height, six feet, six feet tall shelves, same as these ones. But yeah, that's going to be nice. It's, they're also going to be wireframe. They're going to be wireframe, not like wood like this. Uh, all metal, all metal, of course, still black. Got to keep it classy black, but uh, they are going to be wireframe. I am going to have a couple plastic liners on some of the shelves. So for smaller items like DRAM and CPUs, SSDs that don't have boxes, um, I don't want them to slip through the cracks of the uh, the wires, so we're gonna have uh, have that taken care of. Some plastic plastic uh, pieces, and then uh, oh yeah, this was this is a different piece of paper. You can see I like messed around with completely different um, different models, different examples until I found the one that worked best or the one I think is gonna work best. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. So I just think it's gonna be a much smarter way to use this space up, and it's gonna make it a lot more organized in the end. I've already gone ahead and purchased all whatever almost nearly a dozen racks there from Uline. They're very heavy duty. They should be coming next week, so. That's probably gonna be the next studio update video that you guys see is me completely revamping this section, which is super exciting because obviously we get to, uh, you know, play with the products and stuff and arrange them all nice and neat. Uh, but yeah, that's what's going on there. Don't mind this corner of the room though. This is uh, actually not as bad as it looks. It's just because I had to move some empty boxes in here temporarily. Um, but usually without those boxes, the only thing that's in this, this corner are the cases against the wall. Let me move this out of the way. Get out of here, get out of here. So yeah, we've got cases all against the wall. We've got some systems that still need to get taken apart, some of which have been, you know, just sitting there for for honestly like years that I just haven't haven't messed with yet and disassembled. It's organized enough. The only issue is that when I need to access a case that's, you know, particularly a case that's on the bottom, kind of a pain because I got to remove everything on top of it. Uh, but I don't really have to access cases very often, you know, unless I'm doing a build or something um, or I need to use a, this one of these specific cases. I don't really touch these as much as I do the, the other products. Great. Now I'm, now I'm tripping over that. But that being said, I still want to make this a bit more organized so I don't have to do that uh, by getting more racks. So pretty much the same racks that I was talking about, the wireframe ones, but just taller. I want to try to go as high to the ceiling as possible and just have like a nice, like a, a big ladder so I can access stuff on the top. Um, I don't know exactly how tall these walls are, but they're pretty damn high. So I could probably get away with like maybe like a nine, maybe a 10 foot rack situation if we just went all the way across this wall and then that wall and just stacked them all up. Of course, the shelves would have to be spaced apart quite a bit in order to fit all those cases, but that would look pretty clean. I'd also have to mount those racks to the wall so they don't fall over since they're going to be 
is so tall and have so much stuff on it. And we live in California where earthquakes happen all the time. In fact, there was just one last week, big 4.5er. Um, but uh, once that's all taken care of, I think it'll look nicer in here. Again, this is not really a pressing issue either. It's fine for now. So this is probably something that's gonna come later on, but uh, it is something that I am planning to do eventually. And then finally, you might've noticed, I don't know if you noticed at all, but we got shades. We got shades. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Baby. I'm super excited. You guys have no idea because privacy, privacy, yo, people could just see into this place. As, as much as I love these windows and as much as I love seeing these windows and the light coming in, it is kind of annoying when people can just see what you're doing at any hour of the day, especially when it gets dark and it's dark out there and I have lights on here. It's just like super visible. So now that the shades are here, I'm super happy. It does keep some of the sun out. So that's good. It keeps it a little cooler in here. In case you're curious, I got these shades from a place called the Shade Store. I don't know if they're local, like if you can only you know work with them here or if they're all over the place, but it's the same company that we that uh, Wifey Sauce and I used for our personal home. They did our living room uh, shades and they turned out really nice. So we decided to use them again here. Really happy with how these turned out as well. They are kind of like a, I don't know, I don't want to say green, but they're like, a, I think graphite was the name of the color. They complement the, uh, the unfinished concrete really nicely and just looks super clean. I'm really happy with them. But uh, now that we have this privacy, we can finally start doing things in these rooms, in the entry lobby area, as well as in the editing bay, which has just been looking the same. I haven't touched these rooms since we moved in here because again, didn't want people looking at our crap. So now I can build out a little desk area here, sort of a lobby waiting area. This is gonna be storage. So I already have the, uh, the office cabinets that we uh, brought from the, the home studio, the home office. That's gonna go up here, office supplies, laptops maybe, I don't know, other crap. And then of course I wanna decorate, you know, once, once everything's functional. I sort of wanna make it look nice in here, just more presentable and stuff. I want it to feel like a good, fun place to work in. And then in the editing bay, we can uh, we can start fill filling this out as well. Obviously we have our tables already. I do still need to mount these to the wall. Um, not, not like completely floating. I'm gonna keep the legs on them, but just take L brackets and secure them to the wall uh, so they don't wobble. Cause these, uh, these Ikea desks, they're very wobbly. So once I do that, it'll be nice and uh, rigid and more soundproofing in here. I know this isn't like a recording room or anything, but I do occasionally need to take Skype calls here, Zoom calls, you know, have phone meetings, whatever. And I don't want my voice bouncing off the walls anytime I'm doing one of those. So uh, maybe getting some more acoustic panels. If the ones in the film, st uh, the film set that I'm planning to use work out on this wall, then maybe I'll get a couple more in here. Maybe not the same size, maybe something smaller since it's a small room, but uh, over here is gonna be more storage. Again, we have a lot of office supplies, printer, things like that, and uh, potentially decorate this place a little bit too. And now I can finally throw out these boxes or give them to someone who, who needs them um, because they've just been, <laughs> I've been using them up until this point to block this window. Cause I obviously needed this to be set up. There was no way around that. And I didn't want to set it up in, in the other room. So just so people couldn't see anything, I stacked all these boxes from the window. I don't need to do that anymore. So yay, um, it's, it's kind of fascinating. Based on just these two updates alone, the, the, the roller shades and the partition wall, we can now do so much more with the space and move forward with really decking it out and making it feel comfortable and functional and super awesome overall. But that's it, guys. That's the, that's the studio update for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, toss a like on it if you did and get subscribed for more tech content on the way. I will see you guys in the next one. Yeah.